Hi, this is Jen. Welcome back to another episode of What About That? TV Recap and Review. This week we will be discussing Elseworld Part 1. But first, the business of the week. I'm looking to produce a few holiday-themed fan fictions for a segment called Podfic Theater. If you have a story or if you know of an author with a great holiday-themed fanfic you would love to hear it in your ears produced a la audible.com style please submit it to us at whataboutthat17 at gmail.com this is a really great safe space where work can be shared again that's whataboutthat17 at gmail.com and lastly a patreon account is a great way to build community it's simply passing the hat around and giving thanks to the people who create quality content each week. What about that? Re TV recap and review is really a DIY project we started. I started two years ago and I'm looking to grow the cast to the next level. If you appreciate the fandom, if you appreciate the cast, a little goes a long way. A dollar, two dollars, five dollars would really help towards offsetting some of the production cost. Anyhow, I will leave a link in the pod bean show notes for you to head on over and check it out. Thank you very, very much. Tis the season for a crossover. That's all I got. It's that time of year when the Flash faction, Supergirl factions, and Arrow fans stands come together to enjoy a three-part extravaganza our favorite characters flow into each other's existences for a battle royale in which the universe is turned topsy-turvy and our heroes pull together to set it right again ladies and gentlemen today we are talking about else worlds but we are really talking about other worlds and we are in fact talking about all the worlds part one of this three-part crossover takes place in the world of the flash we open the scene with this magical omnipotent being phasing into a dr deegan's life dr deegan is a professor who lectures on the human species and talks about how they should empower themselves by genetically changing to have super abilities like the super beans coming to earth sounds a little familiar doesn't it sounds a little lena luther doesn't it i don't know why this omnipotent being didn't just morph into lena luther's office because if he did he'd have a real problem solver on his hands there'd be a cure for cancer already none of this tight man in a little suit business none of this awkward fitting flash outfit for oliver business lena luther knows how to dress people just ask james so Dr. Diggin is given a book. When he opens the book, I imagine he sees the universe. I imagine he sees all the secrets to things. I imagine he sees the Legion in the future. And I imagine he sees the last year's 1940s crossover happening all on the same page. So he has this all-powerful book and he rewrites his world the way he thinks it should be. And in his world, Dr. G Diggin likes a quantum leap freaky Friday. He imagines Barry Allen as Oliver and Oliver the Arrow as Barry Allen. I am sorry, Oliver the Arrow. I do not know your last name. I feel like, yeah, I don't. The reason why I don't is because I've never actually watched a full episode of The Flash or The Arrow. And everything I know, everything in my universe, everything I know about Barry Allen and The Arrow is really what I learned from the crossover last year. <laughs> and then in the crossover last year, there were so many men in tights doing things, shooting things, being badasses. There was lots of badassery, but none more than Alex Danvers taking headshots without asking names, killing zombies slash Nazi zombies slash Nazi zombies putties. Anyway, so, um, yeah, that's all my reference, you know, and I really, I can't say that I watched the crossover too deeply so for me crossover means immersive experience in which i learn as i go and i give you that perspective so we have the arrow awakening in mr allen's bed 
eating Mr. Allen's pancakes made by Mr. Allen's wife. Ah, yes, so many lines already crossed. And it's really kind of a funny scene. <laughs> it was really a funny, cute little uh, setup into what would become ultimately the Arrow's nightmare because the Arrow, Oliver, he seemingly has inherited, is inhabiting the Flash powers. He has no control over these Flash powers. He doesn't even know how, where the Flash goes to work or how to arrive at the Flash's place of work. And Iris is quick to uh, see that something is amiss, although she's just being a doting spouse, maybe a little too handsy for comfort. I feel like they really hammed it up with the PDA to show how weird this universe would be. And I imagine the Flash fans were really enjoying this. I imagine the Arrow fans were like, no! And I was wondering mentally where Felicity was in all this and if Barry Allen in his universe had yet to come across Felicity, Oliver's wife, and have any awkward exchanges. I was hoping for the opposite to that scene, but instead we have Barry Allen seemingly awakening to a fight training session with a guy who I imagine is an important side supporting character in the Arrowverse Eros show story but I don't know who he is and this is where I got really lost being a Supergirl fan I was following the story pretty good in my opinion but then when Barry Allen is fighting in the what I imagine is the Eros training room they get a call that there's a fight downtown and Barry Allen having figured out that the world he's living in views him as Oliver, the Arrow, starts to freak out, gets a little squeamish at the notion of going out as the Arrow in full Arrow gear and inhabiting those powers. This supporting character, I'm sorry, I do not know this character's name. I, I did not source it. Perspective, being someone from the Supergirl universe, fandom, standom. Um, yeah, so this character looks at Barry Allen, uh, who is... Oliver the Arrow, this is all getting confusing, and says, we've got Baravas fighting Bertinelli's over at the old Diaz weapons cache in the Glades. That literally could have been Spanish to me. I had no idea what was going on. I had to rewind and literally write that down as I was taking notes. After watching it three times, I was like, I have no clue. I have no clue what they are talking about. But I imagine it was kind of like the Capulets and the Montagues. You have the Barabas and the Bertinellis, and they fight by weapons cash glades. Anyways, Barry Allen has to go out and use his arrow powers. And I learned things so much just by watching this crossover. I learned so much about the arrow. Like, for instance, when Barry Allen goes out, he has this quiver of bows because he's the arrow. Kind of like it reminded me of Katniss, and I and uh, he shoots he shoots people with his bows, and that's his power. And he has incendiary arrows. But when I was looking at the arrows like quiver, he was basically all the arrows in the arrow quiver they're like non marked, and I and you know you're always kind of pulling the arrow out from your back, so you just like you never really know what arrow you're gonna get. And I'm like. That would be very confusing for me. I would have a huge problem figuring that out. And Barry Allen does. He, like, you know, picks a regular one when he should have picked a fire one. And, you know, I get it. Hard hard life. Hard existence. Anyways, so I thought that was, I thought that was funny. And I will continue on because I probably am the only person who thought it was funny. Things that I really thought were interesting. Oliver at the core is defined by anger. Barry Allen, at his core, is someone who gets joy and pleasure from the act of his speed. And these two characters had to make their new powers work. And in order to make their new powers work, they had to embrace some of the characteristics of each other. And I thought that was so cool. I thought it was cute when Barry Allen was like, trying to talk like Arrow, who kind of talks like Batman. I thought it was really funny when Barry Allen told Oliver in order to get Iris believing their story, he has to tell her she's his lightning rod. And I was like, what is this? 
So, okay, you have the Flash and Iris. And apparently, the Flash is lightning and Iris is the lightning rod. The one who keeps him permanently grounded. Then you have Oliver. He's the arrow. So is then Felicity the quiver? The one holding it together. And then you have Supergirl. So is Lena Luthor her kryptonite? The one with the power to bring the Supergirl to her knees. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm drawing comparisons across three worlds. Anyhow, so... Uh, Barry Allen, The Flash, and Oliver get Iris on their side because the power of love compels Iris. Like, even though her entire reality has been twisted, even though she acknowledges Oliver as her husband and a second ago was making pancakes, all it takes is for her to be in, the, in, a, in a room alone with Barry, The Flash, the other Flash, the real Flash, to feel it within the center of her, her her heart to feel the connection between them and to know that deep down something is askew and she is on their team to make it right or so she says they end up getting barry allen and the flash end up realizing that they nobody in their world recognizes them or seemingly knows what's happening so the, their plan, the next best plan, and I mean, granted it is kind of like a reach, but I'll go there, I'll go there anyway to bring Supergirl into the show. This is, their next best plan was to uh, find a way to escape their universe via teleportation portal, portal hopping into Kara's universe, go to Smallville, where they play the songs from Smallville, which was probably like my favorite part of this whole episode. We find Barry Allen and The Flash and Supergirl and Clark Kent and Lois Lane all together at the Clark Kent's familial farm. And this was really cool. This is why I watch crossovers. Getting to see Superman, first of all, Tyler Hoechlin. I love this guy as a Superman. I'm all for him getting a show, and they casted Lois Lane. I do not know the actress's name, but I felt like she was a great Lois Lane. I like the chemistry between these two. I like that our first scene with Superman and Lois Lane. You have Superman lifting the car, and Lois is fixing it. I thought that was a great way just to show character, and I really just enjoyed that beat. I love the persistency, the pushiness of Lois Lane. It really, it harkens back to the original Lois Lane, who she was in the comics, and I, the original Lois Lane from the original movies as well with Christopher Reeves. She kind of reminded me of her. I really love that they connected the storyline where Superman been this entire time, all of season three of Supergirl. He was away at Argo City. In this episode, Car Danvers didn't have too much to do. The biggest, most exciting thing she did in this episode was pop off two bottle caps <laughs> with her thumbs. And I was like, wow, Supergirl, wow. Quite the party tricks. I'm impressed. I, I thought it was fun seeing her. I liked her in the scene she had with Tyler Hoechlin. I liked Kara. She just kind of seemed, she was just kind of present. She didn't do anything great. She didn't do anything, anything bad. She punched the giant cyborg with her fist. That was exciting. And the, that slowed the cyborg down long enough for all the superheroes to hold him down so the arrow could take a shot and shoot him in the eye. And she helped. She was a helper. But she wasn't the most important aspect of the story yet. I would love to see Kara be more of a contributor. I imagine we're going to get that in the third part. I really enjoyed seeing what I did see of Kara. It was mostly... Flash and this episode was entirely mostly Flash and Barry Allen centric but I, I definitely think it was a good setup. All in all the superheroes end up going back to Barry Allen's world stopping the cyborg Amazo which is just the best name I've ever heard for a cyborg and the cyborg Amazo has this power to copy powers super beams powers and use them against them so it seems like it, it seems like their plan of incapacitating him with, by just, like, shooting them with the, their powers, effectively, was a bad plan. 
because the cyborg just ended up absorbing all of their powers and using them against them. But it, it, it was whatever plan because this wasn't even the big bad of the day was non-consequential. It was really truly a setup. The big takeaways we we saw was that Cisco had this um, has this ability to see and be on the same plane as the omnipotent being with the universe book and Dr. Deegan or and we know that Dr. Deegan is setting up a bigger fight and that bigger fight is going to be in Gotham and when we go to Gotham we are going to be Ruby Rose as Batwoman and um that's going to be very exciting. I'm very excited to see Ruby Rose as Batwoman. When I first heard she was cast, I was a little not sure about it. Just because in all the comic books, Wonder um, Batwoman is so tall. And Ruby Rose is really short. I don't know if anyone... Like, I was I was working one day on Orange is New Black. Well, a couple, several days on Orange is New Black. Ruby, Ruby Rose is like 5'2". She's real short and super skinny. She is a badass. I, I really enjoyed working on set with her i didn't yeah anyways she is a badass i look forward to seeing her and this is going to be really fun to cover and this is really new we've never seen a batwoman and she's going to be getting her own show hopefully and if she does what about that it's going to be co covering batwoman i can't wait i actually really would love for batwoman and alex danvers to meet because i feel like they have so many parallels that you Alex Danvers, to me, when I first heard the casting, that she was like my first choice. Just to kind of turn Alex into a Batwoman would have been my preference. But I also, you would have had to have Alex leave Supergirl, and that just was never going to happen. I would love to see Maggie Sawyer make her way to the Batwoman world, because Maggie Sawyer is a character from Batwoman. I would love to see... How Barry Ellen and Oliver inevitably find their way back to their own character. And it feels like we're setting up Barry Ellen for a fall. Like, the last scene of the episode, when you finally have Barry's team fully committing to the fact that there has been this character switch, Iris pulls him aside and tells him, you know, when you become yourself again... I don't want you to take on any of the traits of Oliver. And that seems to be, like, I don't want you to become dark like Oliver. I don't want you to fight from a place of darkness. I don't want you to have the anger he has. These are fears she has for Barry. And I feel like, to me, that's just a harbinger of what's to come. I feel like with the crossovers, what one of the cool things that you have is you have this three-part series where you're given a lot of space and time to develop your character and really set the tone for the character that you have taking it into part two of the season which is rather long again these are 24 to 23 20 to 22 episode long seasons i'm not sure how long arrow and flash run but just taking a guess at that there's going to be a consequence for this switch, for this quantum leap, if you will. And I feel like they're setting up Barry Allen for a dark turn. And I don't know his series. I don't know if he's already gone super dark, but it feels like the thing Iris fears is going to be the thing that happens. Back to Oliver. I am interested to see what his world is like. I'm interested to see an episode of Arrow, I guess. I'm I'm going to watch my first episode of Arrow to, tonight, actually. Wish me luck, people. And I am interested to see what he takes away from being Barry. I'm not going to lie. He didn't give me the greatest impression. Like, he seemed genu genuinely kind of like an asshole. Especially when, during the episode when he was trying to get Barry Allen to take his power seriously. I understand, you know, you have these new abilities and you need to really honor them and take them seriously. But I felt like the way he did it by trying to goad Barry into getting angry and fighting from a place of anger, I felt like it, it, it crossed a few lines. And I would have been like, hey man, back off. And he, I don't know, he just, he seems very, I'm interested. I'm interested to see what 
the arrow is in fact like on his own show <laughs> so so there's that um as, as far as supergirl i am so excited for this i'm so excited for her end of the crossover i think that what we're gonna get is deeper into the storyline of humans getting superpowers i think in supergirl we are headed towards lena luther empowering either herself all a freak accident or james becoming super powered or some human is going to get superpowers and it's going to change that world and i'm really excited to see like maybe something happening in the crossover that's going to be the engine for that that you're going to carry over into supergirl so those are things that i'm looking forward to seeing and of course batwoman oh my god i like the costume i really do it looks so much like the it looks so much like the comic book and i am so i'm so ready to give supergirl more than a shot i'm just really excited for it so that's my review thank you all so much for listening i'm going to watch tonight i'm going to be live tweeting if you want to hit me up on twitter i will be live tweeting tonight at what about underscore that and we can discuss all things everything all the time, every day, other worlds, all worlds, else worlds. Thank you. Goodbye. If you're new to the cast, you can tune in to us on iTunes, Spotify, Player FM, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play, Podbean, Listen Notes. We even have some fun things on YouTube. Be sure to like and subscribe. <laughs>